Welcome to the last community update of the year. In this update, we'll be doing an overview of everything the community has done this year. And we're also going to talk about some new hardware accessories for the Pine Phone. And we got a new Pine64 product to announce called Pine Power. Big thanks to Luke Azarzinski, JF, Gammy, and Clover for helping with this video. And also, if you want more content about open source software and hardware, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. This is the video version of the community update. So this will not have as many details as the blog post, but this video should give you the synopsis. So let's get into it. First, we have some housekeeping things to get into. Pine64.org's website will be redone over the holidays, but don't worry because you'll still be able to access everything on Pine64.org, including all the documentation. However, the comment section for the blog might be turned off for a day or two. Work on the chat bridge is also going to start soon, so expect things to break on the chat. Uh, but we will provide a notice for the chat bridge maintenance schedule ahead of time on social media and on the Telegram news channel. Now, unfortunately, there was a pricing error for the KDE Community Edition for these Pine Phone orders, and this was caused by a software issue accidentally charging some people more for shipping. People who have been affected by this issue should be refunded, so if you had your order refunded, you can now reorder your Pine Phone, and this will also now have an effect on when your Pine Phone ships. Earlier this month, we announced that we would be launching online retail stores, although these stores will have a bit of an extra charge to make up for the cost of local support, RMAs, regional warehouse storage, shipping, among other things. To be clear though, we are not getting rid of the community store. We are just giving an extra option to those who want a better support experience and a more traditional buying experience. To end our housekeeping section, we would like to announce that the first single board computer with the RK3566 SoC will be available to developers in January. This is the first step in a lengthy transition to the next generation of SoCs while developers get Linux running on them. This year was difficult for everyone and it brought much of the world to a grinding halt, including a lot of our production and supply chain in China. Much of the present component shortages and price hikes, including the LCD shortage for the Pinebook Pros and Pine Tabs, can be linked to January through May when most factories in China were forced to close for business. The border crossings in Hong Kong also remained closed with an expected reopening date of March 2021. Despite all of these challenges, Pine64 still managed to ship devices this year. Tens of thousands of phones and laptops shipped even through the difficult logistical challenges. This is something to keep in mind while we look back at everything our community did this year. Unfortunately, there are some shortcomings to talk about up first. Uh, one, we were not able to release the Hard Rock 64 board announced at FOSTEM 2020 this year. The Hard Rock 64 was supposed to be a smaller alternative to the Rock Pro 64 with less I.O. But by the time we started production of the Hard Rock 64, the component prices and also new products from competitors made the Hard Rock 64 much worse of a value. Simultaneously, we were also looking at SOCs as we talked about last update and we have decided to create an A and B type board based on future architecture instead. Despite receiving positive reception at launch, the Pine Tab was our second shortcoming this year. We did have a limited production run this year, however we are currently waiting for LCDs and digitizer panels to become available again so that we can manufacture more Pine Tabs following Chinese New Year. Third on the list of shortcomings was our failure to deliver an OG Pinebook to Pinebook Pro upgrade kit. We could not do this due to thermal issues of running the RK3399 in the plastic enclosures from the OG Pinebook designs. It also turned out that flashing the keyboard firmware to get the OG Pinebook keyboard to work with the Pinebook Pro board was not as easy and straightforward as we hoped it would be. Because of these obstacles, we reallocated time to focus on other issues and products this year. We may come back to this product idea in 2021, but we can no longer promise an upgrade kit. Our last shortcoming was the shipping difficulties we encountered with the first two Pine Phone editions. Following COVID-19 lockdowns and border closures in Hong Kong, we had to deal with very complex logistical problems with shipping out battery-powered devices. We chose to ship the first two Pine Phones during the height of the pandemic, which led to several shipping problems and frustration among our user base. We would like to apologize once again to those who had a bad experience during the initial shipments of the Pine Phone. Now let's talk about our community's accomplishments. On the December community update from last year, Lucas said that he foresees Pine64 transitioning from a niche 
FOSS project to a more mainstream one, and he believes that actually happened this year. The amount of active participants more than doubled, and the PinePhone chat alone has nearly 10,000 participants across the chat protocols. Not only has our community grown, but we also have more support for our devices. The PineBook and PineBook Pro is now supported by all major Linux distros that can run on them, and even BSD distros too. We are also frequently being approached by new projects interested in porting to Pine64 platforms. This year we moved all of our community-centered services and resources to our own cluster of Rock Pro 64 boards. This includes the Pine64.org website, IRC and Matrix protocols, the Pine64 wiki, and the community forum. Last year we were asked about feedback regarding what Pine64 did well and where we came short last year. Two of the biggest gripes were the Pine Store's website and the shipping options. To combat this, this year the Pine Store was redone and we improved our shipping options and added an import tax and VAT calculator. In terms of products, the Pine Phone was a major success. Pine64 shipped an astounding number of Pine Phones this year and helped fundraise four Linux smartphone projects. We also managed to build up a platform for developers to cooperate, which caused major strides in the Linux on mobile world. The Pine Time has also significantly exceeded our expectations and has become a completely autonomous project with its own Pine64 subcommunity. And the Pine Time also integrates very well with several Linux distros and Android now. The Pine Time is actually nearly feature complete right now. Speaking of the Pine Time, let's start off the Pine Time section showing off all of these amazing looking watch faces designed by Electrolyte. JF, which is the developer of FinTime, hasn't had much time to devote to the PineTime community this month, but there were some updates with faster wake time, fixing battery readout, adding a call notification in a new paddle game, and the biggest addition is support for Kyrillic symbols in notifications, which should help with support for more languages in AffiniTime, such as Russian. WaspOS also got a release for the Pine Time with heart rate monitoring, step counting, notifications, and better support for over-the-air updates. This version of WaspOS can be installed from within AffiniTime, which is the default pre-installed firmware. Emma's Fish has also been worked on to make it more portable and get it working on other Linux distros other than Sailfish OS, including most x86 Linux distros and ARM distros. We currently have a build running on Manjaro using an x86 system, as well as Manjaro ARM on the Pinebook Pro and Manjaro Plasma on the PinePhone. This is great because this will provide more integration for the Pine Time on a lot of Linux distros and devices, and with Android. If you want to contribute right now, one thing Amafish needs is someone to package it for popular mobile Linux distros such as Manjaro, Mobian, Postmarket OS, and Ubuntu Touch. Unfortunately, we have been unsuccessful in securing LCD panels for the Pinebook Pro, and we are still actively working on finding a reliable source of LCD panels for both the Pinebook Pros and PineTabs, but it appears that the LCD shortages in China are getting worse. We understand that this may come as a disappointment to many people waiting for a Pinebook Pro or PineTab, but there isn't much we can do about the situation for the time being. For now, expect that the production will resume in late March next year. On a positive note, we got some exciting software news for the Pinebook Pro. The Pinebook Pro and the OG Pinebook are now supported in the Debian Bullseye installer. The Pinebook Pro has had really solid Debian support for a while due to a community-built installer by Daniel Thompson, but we now have official support directly from the Debian project. We're looking forward to the third alpha release of this installer so that we can give this a shot. Lastly, the Pinebook Pro docking deck has received very positive feedback from the community. Early reviews have painted a very optimistic picture of our USB-C dock. The docking deck has been in the works for a very long time, so it's a great relief to us that the docking deck has received praise from its launch. For those of you experiencing issues getting the dock to work on the default Manjaro image, please switch over to the unstable branch. This can be done by editing the Pac-Man mirror file and switching from ARM stable to ARM unstable, and then resetting the Pac-Man mirrors. The next stable release of Manjaro will have support for the docking deck baked in. I don't have very much PineCube news this month, but the two things we do have to share are very exciting. There is now an ARMB import to the PineCube that runs mainline kernel 5.9, with Ubuntu 20.04 and Debian 10 options to choose from. We are very thankful for their support from the ARMB project, and we will continue to be thankful for their work. We have also created a housing for the PineCube. Eventually, it will be able to purchase from the Pine Store, but for the time being, we have released STL files 
for the Pinecube housing so that anybody could share it on Thingiverse, print it out with their 3D printer, or improve upon it. Our first run of the Pine Soul sold in under three days, and we did know it would be popular, but we were not prepared for it to sell this well in the time it did. Keeping this in mind, you may be happy to hear that the next batch of Pine Souls are currently being manufactured, and we expect to receive the next shipment of Pine Souls in January. We'll be giving everyone a heads up when the next shipment becomes available on Twitter, Macedon, and in the Telegram news channel. The device has been met with very good reception and feedback from end users, and so far, no major issues have been reported. For, for those who haven't ordered a Pinesol yet, we will most likely have steady Pinesol production after Chinese New Year. But if you have received yours, please share your experience with the device and all of our community platforms. Next year, we plan on launching a line of Pine64 branded power supplies. We plan on creating a portable PSU and a desktop PSU. The portable version will be able to deliver all of these volts and amps over two USB-C ports and USB-A. You can simultaneously charge the Pinebook Pro, the Pinephone, and the Pinetime all at the same time. And you can also use it to power the Pinesol on its own. The portable Pine Power should be out in January or February with a community price tag of $25 in the Community Pine Store. There is also going to be a desktop version which can output up to 120 watts and it will have four times the power delivery uh, with USB-A ports and a USB-C port. We will also have an LCD panel to show detailed monitoring of the power draw for each port. We also consider adding a 10 watt QIYOS charger for the desktop version, but we don't know for sure if we are going to do that. Let us know if that is a feature you would like to see. If you don't know what the Nutcracker challenge is, or you forgot, it's our effort to get 100% open source Wi-Fi and Bluetooth firmware in Pine64 products. Since last month's community update, 19 more developers have received their Pinecone for new contributions to the Nutcracker challenge. Buffalo, the company that makes the Pinecone's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, has promised to release more source code shortly. But while we wait for the code, the community has started exploring other parts of the SOCs, including efforts exploring flashing mechanisms onto the internal boot ROM code. This resulted in early flash tools written in Python and Rust. Lupian has also been writing a bunch of articles about the Pinecone if you're interested in that sort of thing. This month has a lot of Pinephone news. Let's start with Maggie's 5.10 kernel for the Pinephone. This kernel is available for testing on several OSs including Manjaro Fosh and Manjaro Plasma. The new kernel brings some improvements to the modem driver as well as better power delivery for docks and more support for docks. Crest Deep Sleep can now wake up in 400 milliseconds instead of 1.2 seconds before. There is also new firmware for the Pinephone modem, which improves power management as well as call reliability and thermal performance. We were hoping to get this firmware pre-installed on the KDE Edition Pinephones, but unfortunately due to an issue with the flashing process, the KDE Edition won't ship with the new firmware. Luckily, you can flash the modem firmware manually, and Margin Bram is working on a safe tool for flashing the firmware update. Speaking of Margin Bram, his camera app, Megapixels, now has autofocus, manual exposure, and shutter, and back and front camera switching in a 30 FPS image preview. Taking photos on the Pinephone is now easier than ever with the smooth camera preview and the manual exposure controls. We are happy to let you know that we have signed a contract with the highly reputable keyboard vendor to create a Pison 5 like Pinephone keyboard add-on, which will be using the pogo pins. We expect people to be able to buy it after Chinese New Year with a community price tag between $50 and $60, or $10 more from retail stores. Another thing that has entered production is the QY wireless charging case, which should be available prior to Chinese New Year, although we do not have a price tag for it. The back is 2mm thicker and has room to accommodate a small add-on or accessory board such as a LoRa module. Also this month, there were a ton of community-made add-ons. Let's first talk about the PineEye, which is a community-made thermal camera for the Pinephone. This uses a custom breakout board and a PCB designed by JN Avero. Right now, this add-on is not compatible with any camera apps like Megapixels, but it can be interacted with most OSs right now thanks to the i3c-tools package. This is a full community RAM project, and you can already pre-order a custom PCB today if you are interested in this project. There is also a DIY mechanical keyboard made by James Williams that you can put together yourself using a 3D printer and some off-the-shelf components. 
This keyboard snaps to the back of the Pine phone and utilizes the I2C protocol using the pogo pins. Finally, work is being done by Zachary Schroeder, resulting in a functional fingerprint back cover case for the Pine phone. After he shared his design on Reddit, we reached out to him to try and bring his design to fruition. His original design isn't something we can manufacture because the original sensor is too expensive and large, but we found a replacement sensor that is more affordable and smaller. Zachary is currently in the process of enabling the new fingerprint reader to make it operational in the software. Our plan is to try and make it production ready to make this available to end users. Big thanks to Zachary for wanting to work with us on this amazing project. And that is it for this month. Merry Christmas. We hope you have a well rest of your month and happy new year.